Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here with Jen Sense. Hope everybody out there is doing really well today. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about 10 different fragrances that I actually pulled unsolicited compliments with. I know, it's crazy. So you see a lot of talk about compliments with fragrance, most complimented lists and all that stuff. These are ones that people I did not know actually came up to me and complimented what I was wearing when I had them on, which is way, way rarer than it sounds. Usually compliments come from people that you know, whether it's uh, friends or loved ones or family members or coworkers or acquaintances or people you go to school with or whatever. So it's a little bit trendy right now to hate on fragrances and compliments. Like they should not be related whatsoever or something. Like you can talk about fragrances, but you can't talk about compliments. Don't, don't do that. Which I think is really weird. It's kind of a revisionist history to act like we should never talk about compliments when that's one of the biggest reasons that people get into fragrances to begin with. Like sure, your fragrance journey might begin with Dior Sauvage and then end with Artisanal Oud, but it still began with Dior Sauvage. Let's not pretend that the majority of people don't start wearing fragrances because they're seeking positive attention or to smell better to the people around them. I mean, think about it. Fragrances are something you wear and yes, they have an artistic facet to them, but so can your hair, so can your clothes, so can your shoes. The overwhelming vast majority of people don't go to the barber or the salon and say, hey, can you just make my hair look like a Picasso? Nah, nah. Typically they're gonna want something that works for them and makes them look better and more aesthetically pleasing to themselves and other people. So I'm getting off my soapbox, but it's just kind of goofy to say, oh, fragrances, yeah, you can wear them, but don't ever talk about compliments. Don't make that be any part of the reason that you choose your fragrance because that's just stupid, frankly. When I started wearing fragrances, hardcore anyway, Aqua de Joe is what I wore a lot of. And do you know why? Because I got insane amounts of compliments and that reinforced to me, yeah, you should be wearing that. And I did and I loved it. And somebody could have come up to me at that time and said, Aqua de Joe, that sucks. You need this artisanal oud. And I would have said, nah, nah, that's okay. You can uh, get that out of here. I'm not interested. And there's nothing wrong with that. Go back 10 plus years ago on forums and you'll see all kinds of posts. What's your most complimented fragrance? You can go back to Yahoo Answers decades ago and there will be posts like that. You can check that on Base Notes forums, Fragrantica forums years and years ago. But to say people that do care about it are somehow lesser is just, what are you doing? Let me hit you with a couple codes here. Gents 10 will save you 10% off of twistedlily.com. Great niche fragrance store. And jomashop.com, awesome discounter, all kinds of fragrances on there. Use the code gents8, save yourself $8 off any order over 110. And I'll have those linked below. All right, fragrance time, kicking it off. Why sell why live? This one, I was a little bit hesitant on when it first came out because it smells like Y's DNA got mixed together with Invictus, some sort of milkman situation, and then why live popped out. I'm not the biggest fan of that bubblegum DNA, but thankfully here it's not quite as aggressive as in Paco Rabanne's Invictus, so that makes it more wearable for me, and I really like the Y DNA as well. The most youthful of the Y fragrances, but guess what? Huge compliment puller. Y Eau de Parfum gets a lot of attention for pulling compliments, and it does, but Y Live is right there with it, especially if you're a younger guy. And really what helped me come around with Y Live is just getting those compliments. Kind of like uh, when I wore Aqua de Jo, which is the next fragrance in the list. Now this one, to be fair, I did like when I first smelled it. I thought it was awesome. First time I smelled this, I mean, you gotta remember, there were no other Aqua de Jo's at the time. This was it. When you said Aqua de Jo, it wasn't which one? Profumo? Profundo? Profundo Lights? The Eau de Parfum? Absolute? Absolute Instinct? Which one? It wasn't that. When you said Aqua de Jo, it was Aqua de Jo. And I wore this for years as my signature scent. I had other fragrances, but this was my daily driver. And I got so much positive attention from it that like I said before, it just reinforced the fact that I need to be wearing this and all the time. Another big compliment puller for me over the years, Dolce & Gabbana is the one Eau de Parfum. This one, some people will crap on for the performance, say that it is subpar, not good enough, doesn't cut it. But for this type of fragrance, I think it's perfect because it projects just enough that people will catch whispers of it coming off and then they'll be drawn in and wanna get a closer smell, a better whiff. I know that sounds derpy, 
but it's true. That's one of the things that makes this such a perfect date night fragrance. Spicy, sweet, sexy, Dolce & Gabbana, the one eau de parfum, I think a must own for just about any budding fragrance collection. And this one along with Aqua Du Jour, one of my most complimented of all time. After that, we're gonna talk about Creed's Aventus. Now, Aventus is a fragrance that gets a lot of hype, obviously it always has since it came out as being uh, one of the best fragrances for men ever made, if not the best fragrance, the king of fragrances, the alpha fragrance. I think to an extent that the hype got carried away and the fragrance just couldn't match that level of hype because some people would talk about this like it was the most successful compliment pulling fragrance that you could ever have. Like you were gonna spray that on, walk out the door and people within a hundred yards in all directions were gonna just start swarming to you. Almost like it was uh, the middle of the night, they were flies and you're a bug zapper. They're just all gonna swarm you like moths to the flame and be like, what are you wearing? Oh my God, please marry me. It doesn't work like that at all. But it is a solid compliment pulling fragrance that does smell fantastic in my opinion. Now Aventus has been knocked off a million and one times now. So when you smell that DNA, it doesn't smell new and fresh anymore. But the first time I smelled Aventus, my mind was legitimately blown. I thought it was just absolutely stunning. Just one of the best masculine fragrances I had ever smelled. But even though it's not quite the compliment puller that some people make it out to be, at least not for me personally, it is still a good one, darn good. And I have pulled unsolicited compliments both from men and women while wearing Aventus. Actually, that's one of the running gags with Aventus that men like it more than women. Then we've got Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. It is what it is. You can hate on Dior Sauvage. You can say it's boring. You can say whatever you want. Fact of the matter is that people love the way this smells it can go over well. Uh, some people legitimately had a coughing fit, but uh, to be fair, those old ladies at the office, you were hamming it up, come on. Either that or Dior Sauvage just was uh, a bit too much. Could be that too, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick with hamming it up. And Broxen in here on full force, full display, metallic smelling in the opening with bergamot and pepper and lavender as this fragrance dries down. It does smell very appealing, very versatile, and uh, as long as you don't go crazy, crazy with the trigger, really nice compliment puller. One of the most consistent attention grabbing fragrances on the market right now, which is reflected in that being consistently a bestseller at all retail stores. After that, a Mancera Red Tobacco. Red Tobacco, the opening is not all that pleasant. Most people are not gonna like it. Now, hardcore fragrance aficionados out there, they'll probably not really blink at the opening of this because they've smelled worse. <laughs> it's like being a, a war veteran or something instead of a rookie. You've seen some things, you've smelled some things. It takes a lot to uh, jostle you at that point. But for your average everyday Joe, they smell the opening, oof, a little rough. Chemically, a lot going on. Very spicy, in your face, aggressive. As it dries though, it gets so much better smelling, so much smoother, that sweetness comes out and melts together perfectly with the spice instead of coming across like a chemical warfare. And that's where this will pull you attention as it dries down through the mid into the dry down because it projects heavily, it lasts a long time, and it will get you attention once you get out of that opening. The opening will get you attention too, just in a different way. After that, Mont Blanc Legend. Smells like Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. That's pretty much all I have to tell you. Abercrombie and Fitch gets a lot of hate. Fierce gets a lot of hate, but that DNA works. It's also more affordable than Fierce, which I enjoy. That lavender in here done in a way that's modern, sweet, sexy, appealing. The versatility here on par with something like Aqua de Jo and Dior Sauvage. Actually, probably even more versatile than Aqua de Jo if you consider that you could use Legend year round. In Aqua de Jo, you may not want to wear it during the winter and fall. So Fierce slash Legend, any fragrance that smells like that, you're going to do pretty well at pulling positive attention and Legend has always worked well for me. First got that one, I think from uh, TJ Maxx years ago. Got a couple bottles of it. I've got this one and then a little rinky dink one ounce bottle. Now one that I would not believe if you told me that it was one of your unsolicited compliment pullers, but it has worked for me in the past. It's Encre Noir from Lalique. So this is a fragrance that really I just wore for myself and still just wear for myself if I'm gonna wear it because this is not the type of fragrance that I would ever suggest to somebody for a compliment puller because it's dark, 
it's rooty, it's woody, it's got vetiver and cashmere in here. You don't really have, you know, sweetness to offset it or anything like that. It's just woody. Quality here is really good for the price that you pay. It smells great. The first time I smelled this, actually, I was really blown away. I thought, man, that is a niche quality fragrance, as uh, we used to say in the fragrance world, don't say it as much anymore, but that is niche quality for a cheap price. I wore it to the office, really cold uh, in the middle of winter, and the office is right at downtown. So you can like walk out of the office and you're in the downtown area with little restaurants and shops and stuff. So I went through a couple shops and I was heading to uh, grab lunch. And actually one of the girls at this shop, clothing shop, uh, stopped me and asked what I was wearing, said how good it smelled. And I was just kind of like, what the f Okay, and apparently she was in love with it, thought it smelled amazing. So Encre Noir somehow became one of my unsolicited compliment pullers. Nowhere near as much as the other ones here, but I just wanted to mention it because sometimes you will get unsolicited compliments from a fragrance that you would never expect. After that, Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de Lome, the Eau de Toilette, an obvious one. Kind of like Dolce & Gabbana's the one Eau de Parfum in the sense that it doesn't have massive performance, not huge projection, not huge longevity, but it is sweet. It's spicy, it's sexy, it's that type of scent that if somebody smells it, they're gonna be like, doop, doop. That's why I liked La Nuit de Lone Blue Electrique so much. It had this DNA. You could smell it clear as day, only modernized and made more versatile. Some people didn't really like that. They thought uh, Blue Electrique is not different enough for it to warrant a purchase. But for me, the twists and changes did make that one awesome while you could get it in the US. I think people in other countries now can pick it up again, so hopefully it comes back soon to us here in the US, I mean. Lana Nuit de Lome, don't need too much explanation. You guys know about it. I'm sure most of you have smelled it, but this one has always done very well for me ever since it came out. Last but not least, Leighton, Parfums to Marley. I know it's another obvious one, but it's a big compliment puller. Can't really deny that. It's worked really well for me. And this one's another one that's spicy and sweet. If you pull that off successfully, a fragrance, that incorporates those two facets, you pull that off really well, probably gonna crush it as far as intention goes. People are drawn to fragrances like that. It seems like either something that's quite sweet or very fresh. Those seem to be the best type of fragrances, at least for me personally, at pulling attention, which is why something like uh, Encre Noir sticks out even more because it's it's not sweet, it's not fresh. So yeah, you all know about Leighton already, not gonna harp on that one too much, but that one is right there with Aventus, if not better, as far as pulling attention goes. Not as versatile as Aventus though, obviously. All right, guys, that will do it for me. 10 fragrances that I pulled unsolicited compliments with. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.